Hi, um, I'm going to do my extemp outline on California wildfires and the effects that global warming has on wildfires as well as other um, climate issues. So wildfires is a concept that is often miscategorized as a natural occurrence, but what if I told you that global warming in 2020 was said by Suzanne Russ from the Los Angeles Times to have increased the odds of the abnormal extreme heat by 80%. This means that unforeseen fires are going to continue to be unpredictable um, and heat levels will continue to rise if something isn't done about it. So to fix this problem, we need to first ask ourselves, what is causing this plethora of climate crises around the world? And to answer that question, every climate crisis we experience is related to global warming and has detrimental effects to the humans um, on this planet and the human life, um, I mean the animal life. And uh, it is all in the hands of humans. So first, the heating of the earth is prominent as fires Cal in California have skyrocketed and the Antarctic levels have significantly risen, creating an equal response in lowering ice levels. Um, and lastly, I'm going to talk about greenhouse gas emissions and how the food industry elevates these greenhouse gases. Uh, the first display of global warming is through the California fires that have become frequent in the most recent years. Um, fires have boosted the level of the smog in the air um, and boosting the levels of ozone uh, gas. So due to this increase in fires and combined hot weather, the photochemical reactions that turn pollution pollutants into ozone uh, is completely speeding up. So the pollutants are derived often from the tailpipes in vehicles or heavy machinery. And uh, since it's invisible, it can be extremely, well, since it's invisible and it's extremely harmful, it is um, extremely detrimental um, to humans and can cause a lot of lifelong diseases. According to the LA Times, studies have proven that with global warming, ozone levels have risen uh, two parts per billion higher than they would have without the influence of, um, of these gases, or without the influence of global warming, I'm sorry. According to Zeke Housefather, a climate scientist at the Breakthrough Institute of Oakland, it, if there's no changes in emissions, trajectory in California the summer, um, heat will increase by 4.5 degrees. And for reference, um, Howell's father said that since the 1970s, it's increased, the summer heat has increased about 2.5 degrees. So that would be an extremely large change between the 70s and now. Away from the parts of the earth that are catching fire at the hand of global warming, there are also parts of the earth that are melting. Uh, so those, uh, the Antarctic sea levels continue to rise and become inhabitable for thousands of species and compromise the effectivity of our ecosystem. Um, ice loss caused by the warming of the ocean has brought the sea le levels uh, lower than ever recorded. Um, according to Craig Stevens from the Evening Report, one of the unknown uh, the unknowns of global warm ocean warming is how the oceans will adjust to the storage of all the heat. Uh, heating ocean, ocean surfaces makes the upper reaches more stable. This in turn changes how the upper ocean absorbs carbon dioxide. So with this, there's constant change and there's little knowledge to exactly how um, the ocean is going to react and what severity it's going to react. And humans and wildlife might struggle because of this and might struggle to adapt to unforeseen climate changes. So wildlife is greatly impacted by this because, um, because they are experiencing a lack of ice where they would normally use to rest or where they would normally go to hunt. Um, so it's going to change 
what their day to day. Um, yes, so gas emissions are only speeding up the rapid melting of ice in the Antarctic and um, Arctic. And according to the evening report, technologies that can capture already emitted carbon dioxide have many proponents, but they must not come at the expense of efforts to turn off uh, emission sources. Without removing the drivers of emissions, the stopgap measures will only delay the inevitable. Based on this, real change can only be made through um, through what the masses do actively uh, throughout the day to lower their carbon footprints. So this can look like um, by stopping buying from unethical corporations, lowering electricity uh, usage, and perhaps even trading in your car for a bike, <laughs> which is pretty extreme, but I've seen it done. Though we can't see directly how affected and damaged the Antarctic has become, we can recognize the food industry and the um, and the greenhouse gases that it produces. I can see it um, just outside of my house in the morning. You can see like a layer of gas. Um, so that's that has that is that has to do with the food industry. So the food industry creates a plethora of threats to the human race, um, one being air pollution and the other being undernutrition. So first, um, air pollution, um, food waste is a, sorry, first we're doing food waste. Uh, food waste is a huge contributor to uh, the rise of greenhouse gases. And according to American Journal of Public Health, in the United States, one third of all food goes uneaten. And the production, transportation, preparation, and disposal of this wasted food contributes to 8% of the an um, anthropogenic uh, greenhouse gas em emissions. The processed waste in the landfill um, that they're talking about creates an abundance of methane, which is one of the most harmful greenhouse gases. Again, this harms and pollutes the air that we breathe um, the more that we conform to unsustainable food. So making changes um, towards this are extremely necessary because health, has, um, health hazards are created through this because Methane can cause serious health problems as well as um, asthma and lung cancer. Undernutrition can be caused by the lack of sustainable foods and additives that have been proven to cause cancer and other diseases. So um, according to Rachel Clark from the American Health so Association, the national strategy includes a intention to expand access to healthier food environments in federal facilities by implementing and adapting to the FDA's, um, to federal food services guidelines. Um, these are issued by the Centers of, uh, for Disease Control and Prevention and are evidence-based uh, best practices for food service op uh, operations in federal facilities, such as cafeterias and federal office buildings and military facilities. So although this doesn't completely relate to us firsthand, it kind of shows how uh, the acts that are being done, but also um, that aren't being done at the same time because this idea was uh, presented. However, it's been withheld of its duties because it's um, right now FSGs are, um, are still voluntary. So they are not, um, they have not been issued governmentally yet, um, but they do need to. So without active proposals for active change, it's difficult to see the changes in, in, um, and interact as citizens. Um, although this would help federal facilities, there's still a need for more ethical laws to procure the food that we eat everywhere. So to fix this problem, we have to ask ourselves, What's causing this plethora of uh, climate crises around the world? Every climate crisis we experience is related to global warming and has detrimental effects to humans and animal life and 
is in complete, con and we have complete control over this as humans. So first, um, the heating of the California fires has skyrocketed. The Antarctic levels have significantly risen, creating an equal response in lowering ice levels. And lastly, greenhouse gas emissions have been a result um, of the food industry. So thank you for listening.